another type of sequence that we're going to talk about. We've been talking about arithmetic for the past couple of days. There's another type of, type of sequence, and it's called a geometric sequence. So an arithmetic has a common difference. Geometric, by the way, has nothing to do with geometry. But geometric has what's called a common ratio. And we'll look at how to calculate this in, in just a few moments. To find the nth term of a geometric sequence, we still see the same kinds of values here. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. r is the common ratio. We're familiar with a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence. a sub n is the nth term in the sequence. And then n is whatever term we're looking at. A geometric series, we had an arithmetic series, is just the sum. So we have pluses when we write down our series. Geometric series is the sum of the terms in the geometric sequence. And here also is the formula. And we'll talk about this formula more, but again, there's nothing in there that you're not familiar with, with the exception of the r. a sub 1 minus a sub 1 times r n, r to the n, divided by 1 minus r. My r kind of got cut off there at the bottom. So if you need to fill that in, but it should be on your paper. So I kind of just dove in on the notes here. I didn't go into a lot of background with the geometric. But the first thing that I do want to talk about is the difference between arithmetic and geometric is that a geometric has a common ratio. And to figure out a common ratio, by the way, common ratio abbreviated as R, it means that each term is multiplied by the same value. And that's if we go right in our list. If we go left in our list, we're dividing, and that's how we determine whether something is geometric or not. We're going to take 6 divided by 3, which is 2, or 12 divided by 6 is 2, 24 divided by 12 is 2, 48 divided by 24 is 2. Because all of those values are the same, we have a geometric sequence with a common ratio of 2. If we look at letter B, same kind of thing. We can take 12 divided by negative 3, which is negative 4. Or negative 48 divided by 12, which is negative 4. Or, I hope, 192 divided by negative 48 is negative 4. To have a geometric sequence, that, that has to work every single time. In this case, we see that every time that we divide, we get a negative 4. That's our common ratio, which once again means that, yes, we have a geometric. So once we look at those there... Let's go back and find our nth term. Just like we had to do on the quiz a few minutes ago, we had to find the nth term formula. Let's find the nth term formula for the geometric, which means that we have to use this formula here. It doesn't want to go very big. If we look back, let's identify what we know from our first sequence from 2a. We know that our first term in this particular problem, a sub 1 is 3. First value. We also found through our division process that our common ratio is 2. And that's all that we need to find the nth term formula. And what the nth term formula lets us do is it lets us find any value in the sequence. So we fill that into our formula here, and we have a sub n equals 3. 
times our common ratio of 2 to the n minus 1. So that says if we wanted to, we could find the hundredth term in our sequence. We could find the 500th term in the sequence. We can find any value. Even if we wanted to find the 10th term, we could find it. Instead of continuing on and going 48 times 2 and so forth. I mean, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. And so forth. Instead of going in counting, we can use a formula to figure it out. Same over here on part B. Identify what we know. We know that our first term is negative 3. We know that our common ratio is negative 4. And we can fill these back in to our formula. A sub n. Any term in our sequence is going to be determined by taking the first term, negative 3, multiplying it by the common ratio, and then the n minus 1. The n is telling us, well, what term are we looking for? And that will give us our formula to help us find any value in the geometric sequence. So as we flip our page here, what we need to determine is we need to determine whether each sequence is arithmetic geometric or neither. And what I like to do is I like to just take out my calculator on these. And when we look at this here, I, I'm going to make this calculator a little bit smaller so we can look at it. But on problem number one here, start and try to figure out whether it's arithmetic. And the way we do the arithmetic is we say, well, 18 minus 3. I think this is 15. 33 minus 18 gives us 15. 48 minus 33 gives us 15 again. And because those values are all the same, this is going to be arithmetic. And what we found here is that our common difference, and we just showed it on the calculator, we didn't do anything special. Every single time when we subtract it, we came up with 15. As I look at problem number two, by the way, I'm going to put it in decimals just to make it easier to type into the calculator. If I'm sitting at my own desk and typing it in on my calculator, I do use the fraction button, which, by the way, is alpha y equals number one. But just in terms of ease here for this problem, I'm going to use decimals. So 1 half is 0. 0.5, and I start with 0. 0.5 minus 1. Checking to see if it's arithmetic, and we get negative 0. 0.5. Well, let's do 1 fourth, which is 0. 0.25 minus 1 half, which is 0. 0.5. And we get negative 0. 0.25. So when we subtract, those are not the same values. So this one is not arithmetic. And I'm looking at problem number two. I'm not looking at problem number three. It's just hidden behind the calculator. So then let's try the geometric. With geometric, once again, what we do is we divide. So let's take 0.5 divided by 1, which gives us 0.5. And 1 fourth divided by 1 half. 0.25 divided by 0.5 gives us 0.5 again. That's looking good. Let's try 1 eighth. 1 eighth is 0.125 divided by 1 fourth, which is 0.25. And we get 0.5 again. You don't have to write anything down to determine, but you probably do want to use your calculator to determine the fact that this problem here is geometric. And we have a common ratio. And it's 0.5 or, personally, I prefer one half. Let's look at one more here, problem number three. I, I know um, I just need a little bit more time, but problem number three. Start and determine whether it's arithmetic or not. 
So we say, well, 3.6 minus 3. This is 0.6. 4.32 minus 3.6 doesn't give us 0.6. So it's not arithmetic. But remember, we also have this option. It could be neither. But we need to test it out to determine that. So we turn. Let's test and see geometric. 3.6 divided by 3. This is 1.2. 4.32 divided by 3.6 gives us 1.2 again. 5.184 divided by 4.32 still gives us 1.2. That means over here on problem number 3 that this one is also geometric. We have a common ratio of what we just said here, 1.2, 1.2, 1 1.2. If you're working ahead of me, I'm not going to do problem number four, but I did come up with the fact that problem number four is arithmetic. And I have a common difference of seven. But let's move on to some more applied problems. And problem number five, uh, in fact, I want to go to problem number six. I'm going to go six and then I'll do number five. Problem number six, it says, find the indicated term of the geometric sequence with the following parameters. Well, A1 is 12. A sub 1 is 12. R is 0.75, and you don't have to write these down again. And N equals 4. Everything's given to us in this formula. Remember, this one... The top is find the term. And the second equation is to sum. So we need to use this top equation. And we're given everything that we need to find this top equation. So it's a sub 4, because there's a sub n. We're going to put in the 4. Our first term, a sub 1 is 12. Our common ratio is 0.75. And then it's 4 minus 1. There's our formula. And then we type it in. 12 times 0.75 to the 4 minus 1. And we end up with the value here. Our fourth term in the sequence is 5.0625. Going backwards here, going to go back to problem number five. And in problem number five, it says in the geometric sequence where a1 is 15, a sub 1 is 15, our common ratio is 2. Then the question says, what is the fifth term? What is 5 in this problem? What does it represent? It represents n. And once we can identify those pieces, it's a matter of putting it back into the formula. So a sub 5 equals a sub 1, which is 15, times r, 2, to the 5 minus 1. And we're going to type it back into our calculator. 15 times 2 to the 5 minus 1. And in this particular case, we end up with our fifth term is 240. Make sure as we work through um, geometric here over the next couple days that you know how to use your calculator. Not really focusing on that right now, but make sure that you ask if you need help with using the calculator. So we've done five now, we've done six, we went out of order. Um, and what we worked with on five and six is we worked with sequences. Now we're into a series. And the way that we can identify the fact that we're dealing with the series is it's 13 plus 
26 plus 2 plus 104 plus all the way up to 6,656. By the way, let's say it's a bit. Now maybe we need that value and maybe we don't need that value. Let's identify what we know. We know that a sub 1 is 13. We can figure out what the common ratio is. And let me remind you how we do that. 26 divided by 13 is 2. 56 divided by 26. How about 52 divided by 26? 52 divided by 26 is 2. 104 divided by 52 is 2. And again, all that you might need to do is type that value in. You don't necessarily need to write this all out. But we do need to identify what the common ratio is because eventually we're going to find the sum, which means that we're going to have to use the second formula here when we work this problem out. Well, we do know one more piece of information, and it says find the sum of the first 10 terms, and it's 10. And if we can identify those, we certainly, I hope, can put these back into the formula. So we're going to be finding the sum of the first 10 terms. So that means we're adding all of the first 10 of these up. 13 plus 26 plus 52 plus 104, and so forth, plus 208. Adding up the first 10. And we can use a formula to, to figure that out. 13 minus 13, a sub 1 minus a sub 1 times r to the 10. 2 to the 10. Our ratio is 2. Our n is 10. Divided by 1 minus r. And r is 2. So we filled it in. I highly recommend, if you have a fraction button, to use it on these. Now, not everybody has a fraction button on here, so I'm not going to use it on this particular problem. If you don't have the fraction button, it's going to be parentheses, 13 minus 13 parentheses 2 carat to the 10 and then another parentheses divided by parentheses 1 minus 2 close the parentheses again if you have fraction button I highly recommend that you use it but when we type it in whether we use the fraction button or we don't use the fraction button. What we end up with is we end up, and, and we should end up with, the sum of the first 10 terms is 13,299. I'm going to skip number 8 for now and jump to number 9. And we may or may not get problem number 8 done, but 8 is uh, remarkably similar to problem number 7. So it's calculated the exact same way. But I want to spend my time on problem number 9 here most likely to finish. Once again, let's look at what we know. It says in a geometric series. So once again, series means that the terms are added together. The common ratio is 3. S sub 4 the sum of the first four terms is 200. It says find the first term of the sequence. So we don't know what a sub 1 is. But we do know one more piece of information. And it's 4. The sum of the first four terms tells us that n is 4. In terms of the formula, we are going to use the sum formula. And we're going to have to do a little bit more this time because we don't know A1. So fill in what we know. S sub n is 200 equals A1 minus A1 
times r to the fourth divided by 1 minus r. And let's simplify this a little bit more. We've got 200 equals a1 minus a1 times 3 to the fourth. If you remember your quick recalls, 3 to the fourth is 81. If you need to type it in your calculator, type it in your calculator. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. We need to figure out what the first term is. And the way that we're going to figure out what the first term is, is we're going to multiply the right side of the equation by negative 2. So we're going to multiply the left side of the equation by negative 2. And when we multiply those, those cancel out. And now we're left with negative 2 times 200, which is negative 400, equals a sub 1 minus 81 a sub 1. I just wrote the 81 in front instead of in back of the a sub 1. And we actually can get an answer from here. We need to know one more piece of information. And that piece of information is, is that that number in front of the a sub 1 is a 1. This is 1 a sub 1 minus 81 a sub 1. Those are like terms. And that gives us negative 80 a sub 1 equals negative 400. And now we truly can figure out what a sub 1 equals. Because it's negative 80 times a sub 1, we can undo that by dividing by negative 80. And we'll end up with our first term here when we divide a 5.